All right, Devils in Dust is playing live today in Studio B, and you just heard the song called Devils in Dust, I guess from the CD called Devils in Dust. That's right. (laughs) Got to keep it real consistent. Stick with it, right? Theme all the way around, yeah. (laughs) Uh, yeah, Very haunting, very evocative tune. Is there a a story behind? Uh, It's it's just about burying your your problems, uh, leaving them behind, you know, and we were kind of trying to create imagery around that, like, uh, but I have it be really simple as well, because mm-hmm. um, a lot of times that concept, which is in you know most songs, um, can get really de- uh, I don't know, detailed. And we were like, let's can we write this without it being overly complicated or wordy, which is totally one of my things that I'm terrible at. I'm mm-hmm. super wordy um, in songwriting, which has been really great to work with Corey because he's like, trim the fat, trim the fat, trim mm-hmm. the fat, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, so it's about. Um, yeah, taking your taking your devils and leaving them behind. Did, did you know it was going to be the name of the band? When did all of that come together? The song, the band, the I, it kind of all happened at the same time. There's a there's this song, the theme <coughs> surrounding it. Uh, there's a it's the big nod to Springsteen. There's there's some nods to right. Springsteen throughout, and a few other artists um, uh, on this album. So uh, yeah, so it all ha- kind of happened at the same time. It just kind of came together. D- does it feel like it, it? Is it like a thematic record? I'm always interested. Like, or is it just coincidence, or do you not see that at all? It's, it's. I mean, I guess it's coincidence, but this record is definitely about leaving and moving on. Yeah, and absolutely. <coughs> it's uh, whether we meant to or not. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I feel well, Lee and I have talked about this a lot. You know, with songwriting, you may think you're not writing about something in particular, or you're trying to be really abstract about it. But then when you look back, you're like, oh, that was totally what was going on with me at that time. Yeah. Or that just summarized that last, you know, five years of my life. Yeah. Or, and I didn't realize it. And I, that's I, happened a lot with I, us. How could it not be? I mean, it just, yeah. just <coughs> that, that's one of the fun things about artists over time is, is looking at them and go, that was this phase. And that was that time and, and that person's career. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe that's weird when it's your own career. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, It well, is <laughs> weird because it's sometimes it's so, like what he said, when you look back, it's so it can be so blatant. You know, <laughs> and you're like, how did I not think that? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, that happened with me when you, you know, yeah. you looked at some of the songs that I'd written and I didn't think anything about it. And then I looked back, I was like, oh, my God, that was really about what was going on was with like, me. And I did not life. know yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And then these, I guess, you know, was uh, we started writing these songs at a particular time uh, with things going on personally for, for Lee and I, uh, both good and bad. And, you know, uh, these songs are kind of the body of, of what that is. And even the really abstract ones that are on the on the record that aren't necessarily about you know things that happen to us they are still uh, an embodiment of the feeling of mm-hmm. what was going on you know mm-hmm. um there's a, i think yeah. there's a an under an undercurrent of of guilt and letting your guilt go because mm-hmm. i don't know this humans we hate guilt it's it's awful it's there for a reason but it's uh you know it can weigh us down and so i think that it lyrically anyway there's an undercurrent of that for yeah. me anyway we also just had to write this song because we had na- we we started we named the band Devils and Dust, nod to Br- Springsteen. It was right. a great thing, and then we quickly found out there was another Devils and Dust, and in a brilliant move, I was like, "Why don't we just call it Devils in Dust?" And <laughs> that was your idea. <laughs> I think that, that was, was mine. that was totally that was your my idea. idea. <laughs> that was totally my idea. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't know. That was absolutely your idea. If if people uh, <laughs> want to learn about the band, what's the website? What's a good place to go? Devilsindust.com. Yeah, nice yeah. and simple. Nice and easy. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're talking with Lee Glass and Corey Bowman, sort of the, the, on guitars and vocals and the, the core of the band, but in a four-piece today, who's in the band? You know? Oh, yeah. We've got Ian Herod uh, on uh, bass <laughs> and backup vocals Howdy here today. <laughs> Ian's been with us, uh, you know, the better part of our shows this year, and then yeah. when we found out, what a beautiful voice he has. We definitely won't let him go, and we make him sing <laughs> as much as possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, then we, we have got a good time <laughs> absolutely. singing. We've got our longtime musical partner, Jacob Bauman, on the drums. Yeah. yeah. And Jacob, uh, we started Devils and Dust as just a trio. It was just kind of a side thing. At that point, it was a side project. It was just a fun thing to do. And it was Lee and I on acoustic guitars and Jacob on drums, which is a weird uh-huh. setup anyway. But we, we made it work, and for a year, it was really fun like that and then when we started recording the record then we're like okay let's put more of a band around it together and we we didn't we didn't have bass for a year <laughs> so i just kind of tried to do everything on my you guitar. covered <laughs> yeah you covered the bass notes on your on your acoustic but it was kind of jangly you know bluesy and then then the songwriting started happening we were like well it's not it can't be just that so 
Mm-hmm. We found players. Yeah, so that's our that's our group mm-hmm. we got here today. Our expertise. Yeah. We mentioned you worked with uh, Mike Ashworth in Asheville, but you also got to go down and record in Muscle Shoals. Just your basic like Asheville to Muscle Shoals record, but how did? Yeah. You? Oh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mountains to the Swamp record. Yeah, it was the craziest story. So, um, about four, I think it was four years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, this buddy of ours who d- was doing some booking for a venue in Asheville called the Lab. It's not open anymore. Well, it's open, but it's not. No, I don't think it's even open anymore. Um, it's the back of the Lexington Avenue Brewery. And uh, it used to be a music venue. Anyway, he said, he called and he said, can you please open up for this this lady? And I was like, yeah, sure. Uh, we're free. You know, Corey and I were just going to do it acoustic. And I said, who, I- who is it? And he said, Peggy Young. And uh, I said, Peggy Young? Like Neil Young, Peggy Young? <laughs> like Neil Young's wife? He said, yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh. So uh, I was like, uh, yeah, we can do it. So we get there. We open up for her. And her band is just Rock and Roll Hall of Famers. It's just, that's her entire band. Um, they had a separate tour bus for all their Grammys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but we ended up hanging out with them after the show. So cool. They were so awesome. And uh, two of them, I think, uh, don't quote me on that, but I know that Kelvin Holly and, and Spooner Oldham uh, in her band were from Muscle Shoals. Spooner Oldham was one of the original Swampers. Um, he, uh, for folks that don't know, he can, <clears throat> you can hear his, all of his keyboard sounds on uh, Aretha Franklin's records, and uh, he played with Neil Young for a while and Bob Dylan, and he's a, a a fixture there in Muscle Shoals for sure. Anyway, Spooner and I hit it off after this show, and he says, you have got to come down to Muscle Shoals and record. Now, this is way before the Muscle Shoals documentary had come out, the one that's on Netflix. Have you seen it? Mm-hmm. Um, he, in fact, he was talking about recording, and we were like, oh, that's so neat. Nobody knew it was going to be as huge as it was you know uh anyway he said come down there and record and i said buddy there's no way i can afford you there's absolutely no way and he said i'll make sure you can afford me just come just get there and we'll figure it out and then flash forward three years later we're talking about this album and i'm like we got to do it let's just do it uh so we called the studio at fame studios and spooner said yeah yeah let's play so we got down there and uh all of a sudden now we're in fame studios (laughs) recording this album with rock and roll hall of famer spooner oldham and it was crazy it, does, it, does that freak you out or do you like just rise to the room or i mean oh no we were like we were very excited yeah. there was just i'm telling you that studio it was thick I, like just heavy with history and so, vibe so many artists tell me that like whatever it is it's like the room you're in changes how you play just like yeah. the Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that room is swampy and heavy and thick, and uh, you can hear, like, oh, that that makes sense that all of those great recordings came out of this place and this area of the country. It really makes sense. Uh, It's just like if you went to any other famous studio, you'd be like, oh, I get it. So you ended up with what, two tracks? We did two tracks there. Two tracks there. Yeah, just there. We ran out of money. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we we initially thought we'd do half the album in Asheville and half down there. Uh It was going to be like a half as a mountain Appalachian thing and half as a swampy, muddy, and then reality kicked in. (laughs) So we only only had time and money for two, uh, but it was really fun two days to go down there and do it. Awesome. And uh, those cuts are on the new CD, which is called Devils in Dust. And uh, we're hearing tunes off that today. Again, the band's playing Saturday. Jack of the Wood is part of the Warren Haynes Christmas Jam by day, one o'clock ish. Yes. So what do y'all play? An hour, hour and a half? Is no, one? actually, it's short. We're it's probably, I think everybody's playing thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. So it's quick. You get in there and get some good tunes. Get in and there and get it and get out. Yeah, but yeah. everybody that's playing is excellent, and um, it's going to be good. People want to learn about that lineup there and details on that. Um, you can go to Christmas Jam. Christmas. Uh, the website yeah. and uh, I don't know what it is. I'm sure it's hey, just Google search. will get Yeah, Google it. search <laughs> and or you can yeah. just Google uh, Jam by Day and it'll pull up. But I know we've got um, Ray Sisk from Nashville, a great songwriter, is going to be there and uh, uh, Dorsey Parker and Jamie Dose. Yep, from Velvet Truck Stop. Yep. Be playing. Um yeah. Chris O'Neill, uh, David Earl Tomlinson, um, Michelle Malone is actually mm-hmm. playing uh, that lineup. So I'm going to be stalking her. I'm sure. <laughs> hey, Michelle, if you're hearing this, just be ready. <laughs> 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 All right, so Big Time's coming up again. Devils in Dust playing live today. And this brand new CD. We're getting another tune. What's your, what's your next?